just finished one of his 4,000 clay modeling demonstrations in the Iowa Memorial Union. I was sitting in the front row, my heart pounding with such happy excitement that I thought it must be heard above the hand clapping. At last I knew what I wanted from life, I wanted to be a sculptor. Dora E. Mason picture of Dora the way she uh, I first saw her when Ed and I were uh, engaged. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I was about 21 then. Uh-huh. And I think she must have been 50 something. Uh-huh. So. Okay. Mother uh, uh, wrote a book called Adventures in Making Faces. My dad was in the School of Journalism and he uh, wrote a poem for my mother's book, Heart's Ragbag, is the name of the poem. Little pieces of fabric, purple and green and blue, fragments of prints and cambric, silks and linens too. The scrap bag's the best of all places, for all things to make into new. Lawns and ribbons and laces, to whip up a new dress or two. There's a scrap bag of old romances, blue eyes and lipstick stain, river moonlight and dances. You can put together again. You can make them into a story, almost as good as new, and rejoice in the newfound glory that you are a writer too. A woman's heart is a rag bag, and so is the heart of man. And you take the best of the rag tag and fit it into a plan. You can make life go on living in finery new but old, and sweeten the world by giving access to the rainbow's gold. Edward Files Mason mother was born in Wyoming. Her mother and father were Sally and uh, Henry Eaton. Uh, they moved to Mountain Home, Idaho, uh, where my grandfather raised a family of mother and uh, her sister and brother. She uh, met uh, my father, who was the son of the Congregational Minister in Mountain Home, Idaho. They moved to uh, Boise, Idaho after they were married and uh, I was born in Boise and then after one year they moved to Moscow, Idaho, which was the university. And Dad started the School of Journalism there and I found it on Google. You did? Yeah. I've been working on, a, on an autobiography for 12 years and I, All right. I looked on Google and sure enough they had they have everything Edward there. Edward Files Mason started the <laughs> School of Journalism. Good. Lived there until uh, 1929 when they came to Iowa City. Mother was uh, a teacher, having trained at Lewiston Normal in Idaho. And she tried to get a job here in teaching, but they wouldn't allow uh, anyone to teach whose husband was working for the university. So she decided that she would uh, change her study to uh, becoming an administrator and maybe she could change the policy of the teaching. Shortly after school started, she uh, attended a lecture of Laredo Taft from Chicago who chose someone from the audience and made a uh, bust while he was talking. Sculptor Laredo Taft had just finished one of his 4,000 clay modeling demonstrations. I was sitting in the front row, my heart pounding with such happy excitement that I thought it must be heard above the hand clapping. 
At last I knew what I wanted from life. I wanted to be a sculptor. And she was so thrilled by this, she decided that's what she wanted to do. And the next day she had changed her school program to uh, sculpture. One of her uh, first clay sculpture portraits in class was of Dante, who was the great Italian poet of the Middle Ages. Dora had read a book about how to cast a clay sculpture in plaster and decided she wanted to give a cast of Dante to her husband for Christmas. Although it was not a part of her class work, she said, the casting method did not hold any qualms for me, being a cook and a housekeeper. <laughs> and she always stressed her cooking and housekeeping mm -hmm. as being important for her own life. Her work on Dante started at 8 a.m. She was lost in her project, totally forgot lunch and dinner, and discovered when she was done that it was dark outside. And she went out to get her car and found a parking ticket on the front. However, the, the final plaster bust of Dante was finished and ready for Christmas. Next, Dora tackled learning to do life masks, doing this at home with her friends and family, even on her 12-year-old son. She made the life mask so she could have something to work when I wasn't sitting. She couldn't get me to sit long enough. <laughs> so she actually plastered your face with something? And... Yes. And she states in her book, the portrait of Eddie is my choicest possession. Through the years, Dora created other likenesses of our family members, some of the busts mm -hmm. of Sandra and Erica, my grandchildren. And those are our three oldest children, Danny, Richard, and Rosemary. And we had the fourth one, and Ed stepped on Charles. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> when we moved in. And so we would have had our fourth one there, but... Yeah. Now that's Rosemary. That's, oh, that's our daughter, your daughter. Our only daughter. And that plaque is out in the porch. Uh -huh. Sandra, who is over here. All right. And she's Sandra. our oldest. Sandra is, is Charles' daughter. The, Richard has one daughter, I, our second son. That's Erica, yeah. And, okay. Uh, Two years old, and you can see how heavy she is. Yeah, yeah she's a heavy oh, girl. Really. <laughs> there, she modeled that in clay, and then she sent, she cast it in plaster, and then she sent the plaster to be uh, converted to mm -hmm. to uh, bronze. Who is that? Is that you? That's me. That's and what I, was, I thought. That, that was when I was married. Oh, okay. And I was twenty-one that, or twenty-two. That's in the cupboard over there. There, yeah. Good. Dora made several portraits of people while studying for a degree. Many of these busts are owned by the model's families. One of these portraits was of Jane Alcock, who was reproduced in marble. She was the 12-year-old daughter of a university professor who, according to Dora, looked like a little boy then, with short hair and scout-like blouses. In 1938, she sculpted Traumerai, which was cast in silver. Traumerai was given to the PEO headquarters in 1964 in memory of her KZ sister, Nellie Wheeler, where it is on display today. Dora chose to sculpt a half figure of Old Amana as her master's thesis final project. Mrs. Mary Eichaker, age 80, from Homestead, was the model. After eight trips to Havana and back, the realistic clay portrait was finished. Dora wrote, from the cast of Mrs. Eichaker, I modeled a heroic-sized study of the half-figure. In it, I tried to so subordinate the individuality of my model to the abstract ideas of noble character, religion, serenity, and contentedness, to present old manna in character, according to plastic feeling and rhythm, rather than to offer the realistic portrait of a model. 
The model is in middle of Manna in the museum there. Dora received her Master of Fine Arts degree in sculpture in 1939. Uh, Niall Kinnick, as you know, graduated from the University of Iowa in 1940. How Dora happened to sculpt the only life portrait of Niall is a story told again and again. So, uh, she met him. He went. He lived in a front fraternity house. He, he lived on the corner of, of Brown and Lynn Street in, in an annex of the Faisai house. He walked from, from the annex past our house down to the Faisai house and Mother was coming home from downtown walking. I mm -hmm. knew those days we walked. Everybody <laughs> walked. She met Niall Kinnick on a, on a corner down there on Brown Street. Sure. And uh, they walked uh, along a street and visited and Niall told her that uh, his grandfather had been governor of Iowa and that he had his bust in the state house and Niall said he hoped someday he could have his bust there and mother said well I'll make you one. My name is Dave Gould and I'm with Dora Mason at the Iowa City Johnson County Senior Center and the month of October is the celebration of Now Kinnick and the Ironmen here at the center and one of the centerpieces of our exhibit is the Kinnick bust that was made by Dora how many years ago, Dora, was it that you made the Kinnick bust? Must have been 50. <laughs> Must have been 50. Well, it'll be the 50, it'll be yes. 50 years that now it's been gone this coming summer. Yes. Now, how did, how did it come about that you were asked to make it? Oh, he, uh, he asked me. Um, we were coming home from school together. You know, the Faisal house was just a block from where I lived, up mm -hmm. on North Lynn Street. And I told him that I had recently seen the portrait in the Des Moines, in the center, the historical center of his grandfather. Right. And he said, oh, isn't that beautiful? He said, I hope someday um, I can have my bust, if I honor it, mm -hmm. in the same place. And uh, I really think he might have been governor had he lived. Was it the alumni who commissioned the bust or? No, it, there's no commission to mm -hmm. it. We just talked about it, and he said, I'd like to have my portrait made. And I said, well, I'll make it. And that's, it was very informal, and nothing exchanged one way or the other. In fact, I did this just before he graduated. Oh, okay. So Niall came over to the house that evening and sat at the dining ta table and studied for a, an exam that he'd missed while he'd been in New York getting the Heisman Trophy. He uh, would let, read two or three pages and then look up and think about it. So this was an excellent situation for Mother to get a good look at him as she was uh, making his buzz. What kind of conversations did you have with him during the, during the making of this? Oh. Nothing, because he was studying. Oh, so you didn't really, it was just all I just you kept working? still. <laughs> and I just worked and worked hard. <laughs> how, how long did it take you to make the bust? Well, that evening. Oh, you did it, you modeled it in just one evening? Just one evening, oh. yes. And when I got through, he said, would you mind if I'd bring the boys over? So he ran over at the frat house and got the whole fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> and they came over. And oh, they just, they just reveled. And uh, they said it just uh, looked as if it could talk. And uh, then Nile repeated that phrase that he hoped he'd merit a, mm. uh, the State House or someplace. He really mentioned the State, the State Historical Society, where his grandfather as was. As to be governor of Iowa. She finished the bust. Uh, in a few hours or, and took it down to the basement and uh, made a negative mold of plaster of Paris and then put the separator on the inside of the mold and filled it up with plaster of Paris and made the bust and then she chipped off the negative mold leaving the bust and uh, wrapped it up in uh, towels and uh, 
put it in the back seat of the car with pillows and they took off for Washington, D.C. the next morning where uh, they were going to live for a year while Dad was working there. When they got to Washington, D.C., they hired a student to uh, help or to carry their things from the car up to where they were going to live. And the last thing that came up was the bust. And the student unwrapped that and looked at it and said, why, that's Niall Kinnick. Mother was very pleased because the only way that the boy knew that was from pictures he'd seen in the huh. paper, and she thought that indicated that she had a very good likeness. Now, how did you decide to cast it in, in bronze? Was that a conscious decision? Oh, well, plaster's nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it gets bumped and it's patched and it doesn't look like it like the original when you do that. Mm -hmm. So that's one reason that I refused to loan the plaster right. portrait bust again because it's been damaged so many times and I've patched it and patched it and patched it. Well, every time you do that, you're away from your model and, uh, you know, I, I want it perfect. That's right. This is perfect. That's right. Dora became a lecture artist, touring to many of the schools around the United States. She writes, I wanted my demonstration uh, lectures to offer something interesting to watch and to have enough content to inform my listeners. Entertainment without something to enrich a person is a waste of time. With a load of clay and armature and other equipment, Dora traveled by car, usually with a hired driver. Mother had a friend, Ethel Hanley, uh, who had a troop of uh, marionettes, and she gave programs in schools and various organizations around the country, and she helped Mother uh, get started with her uh, sculpture lecturing. They uh, attended a meeting in Lakeside, Ohio, and uh, presented their programs, and then the people who uh, made their schedules uh, bid on those programs, and they mm -hmm. arranged that way for the area that they would lecture in. She lectured in northwestern United States and in uh, northeastern area, and uh, the final uh, lecture area was in the upper Midwest. And they gave her a schedule of uh, 64 programs in six weeks, which meant that she had to make uh, two or three lectures a day, and she had to travel between the places where she lectured. The gas was rationed. She had to find someone who, who would recognize that this was important uh, for the war effort. And, mm get coupons so she could get enough gas to keep going. And her lectures uh, <clears throat> were about the history of sculpture. And while she lectured, she made a bust of someone that she chose out of the audience. She had an armature and uh, she had uh, the clay rolled up in segments like uh, sausages and she would build the uh, uh, the bust, and by the end of the 45 minutes, uh, she had a very good likeness of the person. And then after the lecture was over, she'd tear that all down, and they would roll it up in sausages, and she would go on to the next. Over her lifetime, Dora made over 700 appearances. She worked in many different media to express her art. In addition to sculptures in clay and plaster, 
alabaster wood and marble. She painted and later in life did a lot of clay work on the potter's wheel. Dora stated, however, I am in heaven when my hands are making mud heads. Her goal in making faces was to do character portraits to reflect the beauty of a good soul. In 1981, when Dora was 85, the Iowa City Senior Center opened in the old post office. Dora had never lost her love of teaching, of imparting her philosophy and love of art, combined with her love of working with clay. Starting a ceramics room in the new Senior Center presented a perfect opportunity to once again combine teaching and working with clay. She donated her kiln and wheel and moved these into the ceramic studio in the lower level of the senior center. Dora could teach older citizens that everyone at whatever age could create artistic and useful objects with clay. This article, Clay is Great, was printed in the Senior Center Post in 1983. She praises the materials which come from the good earth. Then she says that the first thrown bowl she ever made came from clay in her own backyard. Although I did not know what I was doing, she said, I turned out a bowl which won a $50 prize in the first All-Iowa Show in the Des Moines Art Center. She ends the article with, I love clay. Senior Center treasures tales of others who worked and helped in the studio. Rachel Dennis and Fanny Syringa are quoted. Dora told of legally blind Ina Wambacher making pottery gifts for her relatives. She had the facility in her hands that she didn't have in her eyes, said Dora. No wonder the ceramic classes at the Senior Center were popular for many years. Dora's enthusiasm was contagious. When the Nile Kenick celebration was held in 1992, Dora, at age 97, was still volunteering in the Senior Center ceramic studio. The Senior Center Post of 1993 is the last time Dora's name appeared in the volunteer list. For 12 years, she had convinced many seniors that they too could be creative with clay. Dora was a charter member of PEO Chapter KZ. She gave a program every year for the PEOs, and it was one of the best programs of the year. Even when she was almost 100 years old, she was still giving her programs. She lived almost till the age of 103, spending her last years living at Oaknall. And then after she moved to Oaknall, we had two parties there, one when she was 98 and the other when she was 100. She died in April of 1999, just two months before her 103rd birthday. All right, so then after Dora got, um, started getting macular degeneration, yeah. mm -hmm. she was still sculpting, and th these would have been out of uh, plaster? Yeah. Those are in plaster. And these yeah. are in plaster? And then she painted them. Well, those are not her most beautiful things, but Can they certainly show together? a lot of expression. These, these yeah. are the uh, the last sculptures she made. Dora, Dora wrote in her book, 
Clay can be used as a language expressing thoughts and ideas and feelings, not spoken in words. Given such wonderful materials in just plain dirt, could anyone wish for more? For Dora, making faces was what it was all about. 